Rebecca Reimers here from the Bridger Teton Avalanche Center. Today we're going to talk about how to submit an avalanche observation. Timely avalanche observations made by knowledgeable recreational users and professionals are one of the best ways to keep backcountry travelers informed on current conditions. There are multiple ways to submit an observation via our website. From our homepage at jhavalanche.org, you can click on the Submit an Observation button in the top left-hand corner and then select the Avalanche Event Observation option. You can also scroll down to the bottom right portion of the homepage, click the blue Submit an Observation button, and select the Avalanche Event Observation option. Avalanche events can also be submitted verbally by leaving a voice message for the Avalanche Center at 307-739-2607. Each avalanche event that is submitted to the Avalanche Center is reviewed by an Avalanche Center specialist before it is posted to the website. For this reason, there will likely be a short delay between when you submit and when one of the forecasters has reviewed and approved your observation for posting on our website. That review process could include edits to your observations and the potential for the reviewer to add comments. Your observations are invaluable to the center and to the public, and we thank you for your timely and accurate observations. If you've already submitted an avalanche observation and want to change the contents, you can submit another observation for the same event and state in the notes section that this is a revision of a previously submitted observation for the reason stated. The forecaster reviewing your observation will delete your previous submittal. Now let's look at the specifics of making an observation. When you make an avalanche observation, there are a few fields that are required. Any of the non-required fields can be left blank. If you are unsure about anything, like the actual date of an event, or would like to provide additional information not designated by a field, please include it in the notes section. This avalanche observation format is modeled after the Professional Avalanche Observation Network developed and used by the Swiss Avalanche Forecasting Program that has been in place for decades. On our site, it's been simplified for recreational users and modified to incorporate advanced GIS and web programming capabilities. Let's take a look at the fields. Your email address and name are required in case we need to contact you for more information or clarification. Your address will not be shared without your permission. The next field, affiliation, is optional. You may want to let us know if you have an affiliation with a professional avalanche program, are taking an avalanche class, or are a member of the public. This information can provide those who view your observations with some insight into your knowledge and experience. Your phone number is required in case we want to contact you. The event date is also required. You may not know the exact date of the avalanche, especially if it's an older event. In this case, please make your best guess. Feel free to explain your rationale for the date provided in the notes sections. For example, the avalanche was seen today, but you believe it occurred several days earlier because the crown was partially blown in. The posted observation will be associated with the date that you believe it occurred. The time field is optional, and unless you witnessed it, you may not know the time. Any guesses can be entered and explained in the notes section. Path location is a required field. This entry can be the name of a known avalanche path like twin slides on Mount Glory. It could be less specific, as in the north face of Mount McDougall, or it could even be less specific, like a steep slope in the Twin Creek drainage. could even be a known slope. You'll notice that there's an avalanche location map. This platform provides the ability to place the actual location of the avalanche on a map using GIS capabilities or by entering the latitude and longitude coordinates of the avalanche location. If you enter the location as a point of the map, those coordinate fields will be automatically filled. The mapping option has a zoom in and out option, a panning option, and two background base map options, satellite or terrain. There is also a button in the top right corner of the map window that expands the map to a full screen mode. It's best to place the avalanche event point marker in the avalanche starting zone. You can do that by clicking on the place on the map where the avalanche occurred. You can use the zoom, pan, and base map options to get that point marker in the correct location. 
when you choose a point on the map, the elevation, reporting zone, and coordinate fields will auto-populate. The reporting zone field is helpful for sorting observations by areas in the Avalanche Events Display section of our website. If you are unsure of a location or maybe someone told you about an avalanche that you didn't actually see, you can state that you are unsure of the accuracy of the location provided in the notes section. If a point location is not provided for an avalanche event, that observation will not display on the map view section of the website. However, that observation is still useful and will be listed in the table view section. Now let's look at the avalanche attribution fields. Most of the avalanche attribution fields have pull-down menus. Descriptions for the items in those menus are listed on our site. To see those lists, go to the Avalanche Events pull-down menu on the homepage and select Avalanche Events. Click on the blue View Map Legend button to see the list. The Avalanche Type and Trigger fields are required. If these are unknown or you are unsure, make your best guess and provide an explanation in the Notes section. The optional fields include Relative Avalanche Size, Destructive Avalanche Size, Avalanche Starting Aspect, Starting Zone Slope Angle, and Crown Depth in Inches. These are all optional fields but hugely helpful if known. Our historical database of avalanche events extends back into the 1970s. Many of the events in the database predate the creation of the destructive avalanche size scale in the 90s. For that reason, relative avalanche size is useful. Our historical database predates the use of metric measurements now used. Reporting crown depths in inches enables comparison of historical data. Avalanche observations that do not include a relative size, crown depth, or starting zone aspect cannot be displayed on the Avalanche Events radial plot section of our website. The aforementioned notes section is next. This is a place for you to provide essential information about your observation in a text format. It's best to be succinct. If you are submitting an avalanche that's for the benefit of the forecasters and you don't want it to be made public, please state that in the notes section and that observation will only be shared with the Avalanche Center staff. Lastly, fields are provided that enable you to upload photographs, video, or insert the URL of a video. There are size and format limitations of those media. Hit the send button to submit your observations to the Avalanche Center, which may take several seconds, especially if your observation includes photos or videos. A message will appear on your screen when the submittal process has been completed. A message will also appear if the submittal does not proceed because a required field is empty. You will have an option to complete that required field and resubmit your observation. Again, your avalanche observation will be reviewed and may be edited by a forecaster before they approve it for viewing by the public. This may take several hours if the forecasters on duty are in the field. Avalanche observations can be viewed in the Avalanche Events section of our website. Please reference that tutorial for full details.